never a dull moment. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, what's up? How are you doing? Sorry, good. I didn't mean to interrupt what you were saying. I thought the request was going to hold for a few seconds. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. I just tried to, you know, Sorry. I, I just tried to ramble while the fuck, while, while everything's loading so people aren't just like, oh, well, this is boring. No problem. I'm pretty How sure. are you? I'm good. I'm good. How have you been doing? You good? Oh, no. Oh, you froze up for a second there. Oh, snap. Go, go. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I went off my Wi-Fi onto my data, so we don't uh, have any problems. <laughs> you know what's funny? I have, this, I have the exact same problem. When I first started doing the, the live interviews, I'd be on my Wi-Fi, and it would keep freezing. So I'd go off and do my data, and it'd work fine. I'm like, how does that work? It's annoying. Yeah. It's but, annoying. So I learned I should have done that before I even started because even with my Tuesday talks, I have to do that because yeah. it's just in and out sometimes. It's great. It's but yeah, to answer weird. your question. Huh? It's weird, though, how it, go how it works like that. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, to answer your question, I, uh, yeah, just keeping busy. COVID-19 kind of screwed us, right? So we have to just find ways to yeah. keep busy. So how are you dealing with it? You know, same same thing, you know, just got to try to be creative and think of, you know, different ways to keep content consistently coming for people with, um, yeah. you know, with the tools that we have. So, you know, luckily, I think I, this is one thing I've really enjoyed doing is these live interviews. I think it's a really dope way to interact with people. And, you know, I was doing a lot of phone interviews when COVID first hit. And, right. You know, phone interviews are great. I've been doing them forever, you know, when you can't connect with artists. But I had never right. even thought to do an interview over Instagram Live until COVID hit. And I'm like, this is, why have we not been doing this sooner? Yeah, ex especially for people that you might have, like, let's say you're, you're interviewing someone from the States, right? Um, or anywhere yeah. else. I mean, sometimes, I mean, a phone won't do it justice. So if you want to be able to see the person in the face, I mean, we forget that we have this technology until something like this happens. And we're like, hey, so the fact that we have technology still everyone should be utilizing it as much as possible because that's that's what we have right now our minds and the technology <laughs> right so i know that's yeah. why i started when i do the talk about it tuesdays it's easier to just do it on live you know you still see people typing away but you can do interviews you can you know it's easier that way more interactive so yeah that's a fact and you know what i'm really um i'm excited to see how moving forward you know, once we get back to normal, uh, moving forward, you know, how people choose to implicate the things we've had to learn in COVID and the ways to use the technology to our advantage. I'm excited to see how people incorporate that moving forward from this. Me too. I've actually been looking at people's stories and pages purposely to see, you know, <clears throat> you know, if people are, are utilizing it just randomly, you know, you watch people's stories anyway. So I mean, there's Facebook yeah. Live, there's IG Live, there's Zoom, there's so many things now. So, I mean, this this would be good to even use after everything somewhat goes to normal. You know what I mean? Because there's yeah. so many, you 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 enlarge your amount of um, platforms. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, definitely. And one thing, works. Another thing I think is cool about it, too, is through it, you know, I'm seeing people do things that you know they're they're maybe naturally meant to do but never really took the step in like you know like you doing the tuesday talks i think that's dope um you know people like Thank pat you. stay we've been doing a lot of interviews since this has happened just stuff like you start to see that people you know have multi-talents and they're, they're very talented in other fields of doing different things as well too that they may have never even given themselves the time of day or you know yep. chance to even try looking into prior yep. to having all this free time so i think that's really cool too yeah, no, I agree completely. And even with, like, for example, um, with, okay, I just had a brain fart. I hate when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. But even, like, even, like, what you're saying with the technology, but also um, 
just any skill in general that people haven't tapped into before, now they get to tap into it. So I went to school, when I went to college, I went for early childhood education. Okay. Right? And then I wanted to go back for music. Yeah. But I never really had a job except, you know, a daycare here and there where I could really utilize those skills. And then I had my son and I've had to homeschool him a few times. But yeah. now it's like you're really getting into it where – you know, for some people, it might be a little more frustrating, but just because I was able to study that and learn lesson plans and all that kind of stuff, it kind of, it really helps out. And now I'm able to utilize those skills, you know, so yeah. I'm thankful for that. Yeah, it's right? awesome. so, yeah, the way it's caused people to, you know, just be creative, it, the way it's caused creatives to create, you know, I love it. And anything, you know, that can inspire creation and, you know, it, it's just a beautiful thing. And, you know, like, I, I just love seeing all the people taking that leap to try something new and i was actually kind of curious like when you uh like because you're doing the tuesday talks now right and um was that something yeah. that you've always wanted to do is kind of get your foot into interviewing and stuff because you've always been a very talkative person you know anytime i meet you like i've seen you on the show circuit for years you know what i mean and you've always been very friendly very you know like outgoing kind of personality you get along with everyone so it, it, it it's a natural it's a natural kind of suiting for you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, was it something you always wanted to get into or was it something that kind of out of Corona, you know, you're like, let's just try doing this, you know? Yeah. So I have always wanted to have my own show, so to speak. Yeah. So I wanted, and then uh, more specifically, I did want to have a podcast. So what I actually started doing late last year, but we really officialized it this year just before COVID was the Raw Report mix show yeah. that I do okay. with DJ Primetime, Briz, and DJ Jinx. Yeah. So that really got me more into it. And then once this thing happened, and by the way, I love doing that, right? Because that show in particular is, uh, it's called the Raw Report. So we keep it extremely raw. So yeah. like opinions, facts, whatever it is. And we, we, we encourage people to get really raw with it too, because we're not here to sugarcoat things, especially with certain topics you talk about. You need to be truthful. You need to be honest. You need to be outspoken. I feel like society kind of pushes you to be the complete opposite. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right. So now once I did that show more, I was leaning even more into it. Like, wow, I love this. Like, this is getting me closer to where I want to be. Right. And then when this COVID-19 happened, my manager and I were talking and this was the idea that came from that. Right. Okay. And I just felt like it was awesome because especially with COVID-19 happening, when it comes to democracy and all that, it's kind of plummeting a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of our rights that are null and void right now. Yeah. So I felt like, you know what, there's having COVID-19 be the main topic. There's so many things like endless amount of topics I feel that can be talked about. So, for instance, tomorrow, the topic is going to be pros and cons. Because obviously, initially, you see this as a con. You yeah. see this as, oh, my God, it's a problem. It's fucking everything up. But like you said, you, there's there's positives. So having creative minds be even more creative or minds that weren't really creative, now they're kind of getting a little fire under their butt, like, hey, what am I going to do now? Oh, you know, like, now I got to tap into this and figure out what skills I have. What do I want to do? So... I feel it's really necessary. And even after COVID-19 starts to wind down, then we'll have that phase of topics to go through. When that's done, trust and believe this is going to keep going because when it comes to racism, other discrimination, a whole lot of shit, that's, yeah, it that all needs fits. to be talked about. It all fits. So I feel like, yeah. And I mean, the end result, the, the real goal is to, ha is to encourage people to speak out. Yeah. That's really the goal of, of what I do every Tuesday is for me to talk, but also for other people to talk. And when you have the comment section like we have right now, you might help somebody else and somebody might help you yeah. with advice or ideas or straight truth that maybe you might not want to hear, but you need to hear. So I'm, I'm all about all of that. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a blessing in disguise. Yeah. COVID-19. Uh, you know what? Um, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, um, you, you hit the hammer on the nail, and that's you know I'm the I'm the type of person I, I I I try to see the glass half full in all situations, and you know really with this whole situation, aside from the fact you know like um my girlfriend's you know basically gonna be ready to deliver our baby anytime now, so it's like 
Unfortunately, Ooh. in this time, oh yeah, look, we got everything set up, ready to go. Oh, that's where you are. Congrats. Yeah, got to build the wall up now, and then, um, which we, wow, we have, obviously, but yeah, and then we're good to go. So, but aside from that, because it's a scary time as far as that's concerned, but minus that, this has just been a blessing. You know what I mean? It's enabled more time to spend at home, get things ready for the child, do things, yeah. you know, creative, try to catch up on other stuff create content like this, like, and um, really kind of put priorities in order and kind of, you know, make you realize, you know, um, where you're burning the wick a little too heavily on one end and where you're not burning it enough on the other and to be able to kind of learn, you know, to, to, to balance things out more properly. Yep. I feel like if anybody comes out of COVID-19, whenever the heck it's going to really like finish. Okay. Yeah. When it's really going to end. I feel like if you haven't come out of this with a learning experience or a new skill set or if you're doing music or whatever it is that you're passionate about and whatever it is that you're working toward or working on, I feel like if you come out of COVID-19 with the same mindset and the same everything that you started with, it was a fucking waste of time. Facts. Facts. That's fucking facts. Like, there. That's just what it is. And, 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 and just like for everybody that's listening right now, don't take that the wrong way. Don't take it as like, oh my God, I have to have so much, all this stuff ready. And oh my God, I'm a failure. No, what I mean is at least have this much, even if that means you just had a revelation of some sort, you had some kind, that's fine. If you yep. learn something about yourself, about other people, about anything, I don't care what it is. If you, you know, read a book and you never used to read before, yeah, that is still an accomplishment. Huge. Accomplishment. I feel like whether it's this big or it's this big, it doesn't matter. As long yeah. as you've improved your life in some way, shape, or form, it doesn't matter. And it always gets worse before it gets better. But just know that it does get better. Yeah. Right. No. So like, yeah, I, I, I just, I just feel that way. Like for me, for instance, no one's gonna see it for a little bit still, but I've just been like I homeschool my son, as you know, and that thankfully keeps me like really grounded because I just followed the same schedule as he did in school. Yeah. So it, it makes it a little easier that way. But, uh, I started exercising Important. on a regular basis now and he does it with me. I have him do it with me and he loves it. And so he's keeping active and fit. I'm keeping active and fit. You know, we, we can go out bike riding. We can do so many things when it comes to my music now and my business, I have been learning a lot of new things but I've also been starting new parts of my business yeah. to have it grow even more. So different uh, businesses within the music that I'm doing. Right. Yeah. So when this whole thing is said and done, and even before that, it's going to, a lot more is going to be coming out, you know what, like between now and next year and even the year after that. Yeah. So really this time, like I said, get shit done. That's what it is. For me, I feel like it's all about adaptation. So like COVID-19 happened. Okay, so things are going to be a little different. You're going to have to, you know, configure things a little different. But it does not mean that you stop. Exactly. Right? It's exactly. just like if, you know, anyone's trying to bring you down or anything is trying to bring you down, you just have to find a way around that. There's a loophole in everything in life, right? Oh. It might take long to get there, right? But... Nonetheless, you're going to get there if you want to get there. So, Exactly, exactly. And I like how you went back and clarified it too because that, that is a thing. You know, I think sometimes us, you know, as creatives, when we talk about things like this, we are quick to say like, yo, like, you know, I, I've, been, I've been guilty a couple times being on here and being like, yo, if you're doing music and you don't have, you know, 10 new songs written or however many beats made or blah, 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 you're a fucking piece of shit. You're wasting your life. What are you doing? You, all you do is complain about not having free time and you're not doing fuck all you know but it, it you're completely correct and the fact is it's like you know I, I don't think you know when we say things sometimes we don't mean to come off like as pretentious musicians or whatever the fuck but yeah. it's just the fact of saying like you know when you when you do this a lot of times you we're working nine to fives you know like yourself Me you, too. Have, you have you have kids right you know what i mean I'm, I'm about to have kids you know what i mean it's like so you got to find a way to balance music your dreams continue this this goal and pushing it forward while working nine to five and while doing other daily tasks and chores in your day-to-day -day life to keep things moving forward yep. as well. 
So it's like, I think a lot of times when you're so over consumed by your work, you look at people who, you know, have the potential and don't necessarily tap into it. And you're kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? It's like, now you got all this time to sit at home, you know, all these excuses why your music's not on Spotify or why you haven't done this part of the business or why you don't send songs out to radio or why you don't do this or that. And it's like, well, you don't really got an excuse because now you have all that time you said you never had right here sitting, but you're watching TV. But I think it's important yes. what you say, you know, like even if you read a book, that's an accomplishment. Like anything positive towards bettering yourself as an accomplishment, starting to exercise on a daily basis, even changing your eating habits through this. As long yeah. as you come out, you know, better on the other side, you've used the time for good. Yeah, that's that's literally it. That yeah. is literally it. That's literally it. That's so, I mean, there's nothing wrong with munching out on the couch and watching a movie or five, you yeah. know? There's no problem with that, bro. But <clears throat> if you're going day, day after day after day and you're not bettering yourself, um, even if it's slowly, then I mean, come on, you know, you and, and, do. and, uh huh? I said, Sorry. Unfortunately, you know, if you can't better yourself, at least to some degree in this kind of a situation, you're kind of doomed in life because it's not going to be any easier when things get back to normal. You know what I mean? So if you can't, well, yeah. now, you know, yeah. whether it's as simple yep. as feeding or anything, you know, but if you're not bettering yourself to some degree, you know, it's like, shit, man, you know, what are yep. you doing? Yep. I agree, because, like, so with the releases that I've put out since, like, the video Forever Love in January. Yep. So great that was a good – oh, thank you so much. So I had a great team behind it, so I'm thankful for that and blessed finally to have that, you know? Yeah. But um, that, was a, that was a wicked start to my year. And then, you know, we were getting into the release of the Melody single, and then COVID-19 just popped off. And I'm like, really? Really? this what you're gonna do to me right now yeah right. fuck you COVID-19 it's not going down like that you know <laughs> so 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 creativity had to like really come in and boot me in the butt you know what I'm saying and be like yeah you need to come up with some ideas for real and yeah. it's and like you said like keeping the content going and keeping it relevant having it make sense you know what I'm saying yeah um and still trying to inspire people at the same time when you yourself is frustrated you know yeah. so really um, I feel like especially now, but in general, like every time you release something, having that campaign where, you know, you interact with other people and you have them join in is always beneficial because really and truly, like we're artists, but who do we depend on necessarily for, or so to speak, for views? Listeners, fans, the people, supporters. The listeners, the fans, all that. Yep. So something that I have had to remember sometimes is it's not just about your music it's about um who you are as a person you know people yeah. want to know more about you they don't just want to have your music all the time or to see a video they want to see you as a person right so sometimes uh i myself forget that and i have to be reminded or remind myself that listen you got to put some of you you out there too right yeah. so throughout this covid 19 it's just a, been a matter of like restructuring the whole itinerary, yeah, you know, the whole schedule of, you know, how you release things, when, what you're going to join all along with it. So like, for instance, tomorrow is, like I said, the pros and cons for talk about a Tuesday for COVID-19. Yeah. Next Tuesday on the 26th. So my, my melody video releases on Monday, the awesome. 25th. All right. And now the campaign around that now on my talk about it Tuesdays, I don't know if you've ever heard of a company. Uh, it's a bene benevolent fund called um, Unison. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're amazing. So I'm going to be talking with Sarah Hagerman from there on my talk wow. about it Tuesday from Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, every now I have a Melody t-shirt, um, and it's on my website, cocolea.ca. For every t-shirt that I sell, I'm going to be donating 35% of those proceeds to Unison so that money can then go towards artists. Awesome. Because I, that's something I've always wanted to do too, like community work and outreach. Like I have my Coco's Community Cares page now on IG. For anyone who doesn't know, you can look that up. And that page is really to like, and what I really want to do is to hone in on, on different communities and help those communities in whatever ways they need, right? Yeah. And really have that stretch a long way. 
you know, and not for it to just, you know, be there for a little bit where things are improving and then bounce. It's like something that can have longevity. Yeah. Right. So helping artists is something that I feel is necessary because people just, you know, think of the music sometimes. They don't think about the fact that we're all humans. Yeah. <laughs> we're all regular people like anybody else. We all have uh, struggles. We all have health conditions. Maybe not all of us, but some of us or a lot yeah. of us. We all have different things in our personal life that affect us financially um, or affect our mental health. So I'm thankful to have Sarah um, and Unison involved in that. So look out for that. That's going to start on Monday. It's going to go till next Friday. So awesome. anyone that gets a T-shirt, yeah, that money is going to be going toward the artists. That's so awesome. So can help. Yeah, Where's man. The, the new single, is that coming out this Monday then or the following Monday? The video. The video. So the single Melody came out in March. Okay. And, um, yeah. And so we um, – and then we also filmed it in March for the video. And so that's going to come out on uh, Monday. Briz is on that track as well. He's featured on there. Ah. And, um, yeah, man. And then Mirror Magic was on the beat. He's from Jersey. Dope. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really dope, that video. And then the single Real Love Test is already out. That's the next one to film. And that one's going to be a whole lot of sexy. <laughs> so if you haven't heard that song, listen to the lyrics and then just, you know. <laughs> you can imagine Use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, awesome. so as as you can see, like there, there's no room for me for stopping. Yep. There's, there's, you might have a tiny bit of slowdown, but there's, there's really no room. And in terms of community um, work, I'm also going to be linking up with uh, Conscious. I don't know if you've heard of Conscious Kingdom. Okay. Um, rock Solid. Yep. Um, he's another artist, dope artist. And he's he does a lot of community work back home where he's from here. So we actually were going to start something right before COVID hit. So in the future, look out for something because I'll have him on the show and we'll be discussing different things as well. Um. But I'm looking into right now different creative ways to still help like this campaign with Melody with the, the shirts for the artists. That's one way. But I'm yeah. looking for other creative ways to still be able to, to help and give without, you know, being there physically because that's obviously tough right now. Yeah. But, but that's but, the goal. That's awesome, you know. And we need, we need more people in the industry who do these types of things. And, you know, I'm very guilty of it myself. I don't really do shit you know what i mean i mean i guess you you could consider interviewing artists a contribution back to you know what i mean yeah. but you know aside from that you know there's not really a whole lot i can really say i've done you know like if people you know if people are around me and i'm able to help them out i give them <laughs> opportunities you know what i mean i'm always i'm always giving people opportunities if i can help them you are them. but you are you know um a I really contribution is a yeah. contribution it's a, it's a, it's a, I guess a different kind of contribution, but I really commend you guys who really go out there and do the groundwork and are really helping by either creating or becoming parts of these organizations or working with them to actually help people financially. And in the future, you know, that's something I would really like to get into more of like, you know, the stuff Turk does and just stuff like that, you know, yeah. it, it's so, so important. And, um, you know, and I think a lot of times as artists, we look at it like something like, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. Like, I'd be down to do that. I'll get around to it. But we don't really have the great minds of making it all connect or making it happen. And we're so busy. You know, it's so hard, so busy, you know, doing all the networking and making this and that work to, you know, just to keep your own shit, your own ship afloat. It's like to add another layer to it, it's like, holy shit. But it's like, you know, but by any means, I just want to say, like, if there's any, any community things you're ever doing, you know, and you need a hand or, you know, like, you, you know, you want us to do a show special on the radio show, at least about it to promote it or anything you can do, you know, just let me know. Like, I'd be glad to help. It's something that I'm I've never been involved in with enough, but that, you know, I've been I've been really wanting to become involved with, you know, so I just want to appreciate you know, that. You know, the, the hand's always here if you need help with, with, with things like that. And I, I commend you and all, all the others who, you know, do your part and helping the community, helping the youth, help, in whatever way you guys help, you know. Well, I appreciate that, man. Listen, I, I used to volunteer a lot when I was younger. Yeah. And then, you know, life gets busy. So for a while, I've been talking about it too, and I wasn't actually doing it. Yeah. 
So really and truly don't feel down on yourself about it because there's so many different ways to give back. You know what I mean? And yeah. it might not be to, pers- for example, might not be to a homeless person or someone who's being abused, who's in a shelter or what have you, but helping in general yeah. is, is, is what this world needs. So even if it's you just putting people on your platform to talk and, and all that, and that's how you are since I've known you, as far as I know, you get along with everyone too, more or less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Try you're to. a great guy. You're very respectful. Whatever. We all get into our little things, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, that's the way I see it. You know what I'm saying? As long as you are that type of person, don't worry about nothing else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's that's who you are as a person, and that does mean a lot. So it is what it is. And, like, you, you just did it right there. If you need our support on the show or whatever to promote, that's huge because that is really what we need. The yeah. best way for people to know is word of mouth. Exactly, yeah. Right? And promotion with the proper pr- pr- promotions, right? So I appreciate the hell out of that. And I'm sure everybody that you put on, on the show feels the exact same way. Because really that's just people hearing our voice. Yeah, and you know, sure and, say. and by all means too, you know, anytime you got anything like that, even if you just need a simple share for it or anything, let me know. It's just, you know, I think a lot of times too what happens is, you know, a lot of us are all doing our own thing. And we can't always see everything going on. And I think a lot of times, you know, we all kind of get lost and clouded in our own things of what we're doing. But, you know, anytime, yeah. you know, anytime you want like a share for, a, you know, anything that you're doing in that type of form, like I said, the radio show, anything like all you got to do is hit me up. You know, I'm, I'm more than glad to, you know, help in whatever way I can, you know, and I think that's what our scene needs. We need more of that. We need more people being open. Yeah. Just, you know, it, the teamwork makes the dream work, you know, at the end of the day. Yes. Yes. I feel like people just need to remember that it's a simple share or a simple, you know, how's it going? Like I have people that. Oh, shit. Froze up again for a sec. Do my little waves at everybody. Did I get everyone? Oh, there you go. You're back now. (laughs) Stupid. Networks. (laughs) Networks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what I was saying is I feel like it's just a simple share. Or like I said, uh, there's a lot of people um, that I know when I was doing shows and they weren't able to make the shows. But, okay, this is the big but, okay. I did have people and they were the same people, okay, that when I was going to have the show, like just before or earlier in the day or the day before and after the show, you know, they're, they're messaging, they're remembering to message me or link me and say, hey, I just want to let you know, like, I can't be there, but good luck and whatever. Yeah. And, and after the show or the very next day, hey, how did it go? That shit right there is real. Yeah, that so means if people a lot. Think, if people think that the only way that people support your ass is by coming out to shows, very ridiculous. And you need to wake the fuck up because that's not at yeah. all true. There's people that don't even live in Canada that I know that will be like, hey, how'd the show go? And then there's yeah. people here that will rant and rave about, yeah, 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 but you're never around. And I'm not talking about physically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm never yeah. going to be one that's going get to on, uh, get on any platform and be like, you bastards, you weren't there, or you didn't say this, you didn't. No, it's not that. It's just everybody has a life, too. You have to remember that. But the but when people do reach out like that, of course, it yeah. it means a lot. Or, like, randomly, you hit me up and say, yo, that was a wicked post, you know, good for you, or whatever. Like, we all need to be doing that for each other. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Maybe someone's having a really shitty day, <laughs> and they get that message from you, and they're like, damn, that's awesome. You know? That's what we need, you know? Yeah. A lot of people say there's... A lot of support. A lot of people say there's not enough support. You know? I think it's just a matter of just do it. You know? Stop looking at it as, as it's this or it's that. Just do it. We all got to support each other. Yeah. You know? That's really all it is. And if it wasn't for people's support, how far would we really go? That's not to demean the work we all put in. It's just a fact, right? Yeah. And you know what? And and it's true, too. And I think that's another thing, too, is anyone who's destined, 
you know, to really make it, you're not really worried about likes and stuff. You know, we've all been through the po part where you have one person who likes your post, two people who like your post. And, you know, eventually you get to maybe 30, 40, 50, whatever it is. But that doesn't determine the work that you put in. And it doesn't determine Thank the you. quality of the work. You know what I mean? It's like, Thank you know, I, yeah. I was I was making music before there were likes. You know what I mean? And I'm going to still be making it when there's the next app. It's the whatever, you know? And I think at the end of the day, people get so caught up in the likes and all these things. And really what's important is just your integrity. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when there's no one watching, are you still honing your craft and working on it and trying to make it better? Because if you're not when no one's yeah. watching, then what good are you going to be when you got the spotlight on you? You know what I mean? And I think that's the real, the, the real divider between you know the people who just want the clout and the people who are really here for the right reasons exactly 100 thousand percent uh people really get get lost in the likes and and all that crap and that and you know people are even buying their likes because that's how lost they are that's wild like you do know that <laughs> once you buy those likes anyone with a brain is going to go on your page and they're going to look at your comments that aren't going to match up with your likes. And this is the thing, too. I always say this. How good is it really for you to go and buy likes and then you never really know what you really prefer? How good or not you are. That's what I don't get. It's like, as what's the point of that? Person, your stats are the only thing you have because it represents what you're doing that's working. It's a direct it's a direct result of the work you've put in and showing where you need to improve, whether it be in marketing, whether it be in whatever it may be. It is a direct result telling you where you need to improve. And what when you buy hits, you don't even know where to improve because you just got a bunch of fake stats. You don't know how many people even actually listen. If it was 20 yep. people, it's like... Yeah. And the, the other thing I find silly about it is it sets an unrealistic precedent. So you buy 40,000 hits on a song. Cool. But now the next time you drop a song, you have to make that same investment of fake hits. That same $200, yeah. $300 you're just paying on fake hits, you could have went out and bought posters, stickers, cards. You could have fucking done a sponsored ad. You could have done things that are real promotional techniques and applied yeah. that to your music. And everybody yeah. who at least watched it, you know, or came across it was a real listener. You buy yeah. views and you set a false precedent in which now you now have to invest the same amount of worthless currency basically, because yeah. as soon as it goes to a fake view, that money becomes worthless because that's not a representation exactly. of anything real. And now you yeah. have to spend $400 every time you want to drop a song just to keep the logistics looking. Exactly. Without, yep. without any improvement to your actual brand building. Yep, yep. And then if you say, you know what, this isn't really the best idea, I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to go completely organic, right? Yep. Then you watch it go like this. And then it looks like you fell off. Yeah, exactly. So you might as well, like, bro, I'd rather have five real ones than 20 fake ones. Facts. Because, and I think that, you know, as an artist myself, I always, uh, I, like, I think about this in music, but also, like, in business in general and in life in general. It's yeah. always harder. It's always harder to keep an A than it was to get the A. So if you, if you think about that mentality, if yeah. you're doing things organically, it's hard enough, right? Yeah. But imagine now if you go and fake it, <laughs> it's way harder to keep that. Yeah. It's like cheating. It's like cheating on, you know, work at school or whatever. And, hey, I got this A, I got this A, I got this A. And, oh, now man, this is the right week. thing to do. And then you fail because you don't know shit. And yeah. you're just faking it the whole time. No, man. People need to get out of that fast food matrix idea of life because that's what we live in Facts. and they need to just smarten up and they need to just hone in on them fuck everybody else that's saying garbage because everyone's always going to talk garbage whether you do good or whether you do bad yep. and to be honest with you the better you do the more, the more people that are going to try to shit on you yeah the more people are going to bring you down yep. so you might as well just do what you want to do do it hard as fuck so you you know, like, this is what I want to do. Oh, my God, I accomplished this. It's amazing. Let's set the bar higher this time, this time and then the next time and the next time and the next time. Yeah. I've actually had people ask me, not for a little while now, but I have had people ask me, you know, why do you still do it? Not as a disrespecting, but 
why do you still do it? Like, you're still not, you know, there, there, right? And I told him, I'm like, because this is what I love to do. I never started music solely because I wanted to make millions of dollars or any of that shit. Yeah. I did this because music literally saved my life. If right. I didn't have music when I was growing up, I wouldn't be here right now. And that's a fact. That's I'm a not going to get too mushy and all that because, you know, tough. No, but, but if I did not have music and I did not write my pain out, Coco Leia would not be here today. And that is a fact. I could put my hand on fire. Yeah. My eyes are tearing up as I say this, okay? Because people go through real struggles. Oh, uh, no, we got to froze again. Send the waves out. Last time, last time they clicked her back in when we did that. The golden point right here, too. You know why? I think it's Instagram servers. I think Instagram needs. Take us off your platform, but. Come on, click back in. Uh, she'll hop back in here in a sec, I assume. But, you know, shout out to y'all watching too. You know, shout out to Coco Lea. Um, you know, very, very, um, very in depth, interesting conversation, you know, and it's true. A lot of stuff, you know, um, like all this shit. Wow, well, look at that. That's a nasty red mark from this hat. <laughs> Probably shouldn't wear hats a day after you shave, right? Um, Let's see, is she back in here? Yo, shout out to her rain, man. What's good, my G? Uh, all right, let me message her on the other phone quick. Oh, there she goes. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I was just messaging you. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yo, talking too much real shit. Instagram. Instagram. I... Got it. Oh, no, don't do it again. Don't do it again. No. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to You're creeping through. Oh, man, IG, why you got to do this? Why you got to do this, IG? Oh. Oh, We're man. Back. Oh, man. We're I'm back. so sorry. This phone's lucky that I need it, eh? Because it go flying that way, I swear to God. Fudge. God. Damn. I know everyone in the thing's like, oh, it's lagging. I know, guys. I'm so sorry. It's, it's all Coco's fault. But yes. Yo. To say what we were saying, yes. Um, that's why I started music. So at the end of the day... We all just have to accept, you know, what certain things are and we have to push through it and we have to do it honestly. And to answer anyone who will ever ask me that question, why I still do this, because I know my music matters and I know there's people who've reached out to me and said like, yo, I listen to Sunrise every single day. When I wake up in the morning, I listen to Sunrise every day because it uplifts them and it makes them like think about how much they should love themselves and you know, get ready for the day that they're going to have outside because there's a lot of people who are going to walk all over you or try. You know, every single song I've ever written is facts. It's either something I specifically went through or I'm still going through or somebody that I knew, you know, yeah, like real, 
real stories because I feel like uh, people can relate to them. Obviously, music will bring you money if you're good at it and you, you know, utilize platforms and all that for sure. Um, I also do it because my, I feel like me on this earth, I'm here for a reason. We all are. I feel like knowing what your purpose is on this earth is yeah. extremely important. And sometimes it takes a long time for you to realize what it is. But the more people that came to me and said, you know, yeah. yo, your music speaks to me. It really helps me get through this or through that. And they'll tell me their serious stories. And it makes me emotional because it's like, I know what music did for me. I know what it still to this day does for me. So to know that my music yeah. helps people, I'm already winning, bro. So when people say, you know, you're not making like money like you, you probably want to or like other people think you should or whatever. So why do you still do it? I do it because I can. I do it because I'm supposed to. I'm do it because I do it because people depend on it, yep. but I do it because I depend on it. I do it because I want my son to see that I'm making a difference because I want him to make a difference too. And the only way I'm going to make that happen is if he sees the example that his mom sets for him, you know? So it's just what it is. I feel like if you're going to do something, do it a hundred percent or just don't do it at all. That's a fact, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go in, give it all you got. You know what I mean? And like that—that's—that's yeah. that's as simple as that, you know. But it, you know, super, um, you know, very intelligent person. I'm enjoying this conversation. Everybody in the comments has been enjoying it. You know, her, uh, my dude, Harain. I went to high school with Mans, and he's just—he said, mm -hmm. oh, "The real one, pretty too." Love Thank you so Thanks. much. You know, um, just very, you know, very uplifting conversation, you know, and I think it's, it, it's the type of dialogue that people, you know, especially in a time like this kind of need to hear, too. It's a, it's inspirational. And um, so, like, I just like, like, plug the um, the Tuesday talks you do as well, too. Like, um, like, the, could you I know you do them consistent every Tuesday. Do you do it at the same time every Tuesday or does it depend? Yeah. So I do it at 9 p.m. every Tuesday. The only time. It might change, and I will let everyone know about that, is only if there's a specific person I'm interviewing that I might need to work around their schedule. Yeah. So, like, if I had you on the schedule and you were on the show and you had something else happening around 9, I could move the time for you. Because yeah. really and truly, everyone, I mean, there's still people that are working their essential jobs, but there's a lot of people that are free. So, I yeah. mean, any time can really work. Um, but yeah, it's 9 p.m. every Tuesday. Sometimes I interview people. Um, sometimes I don't. So tomorrow I won't. Next week I will. Um, I really try to look at the topics, topic list that I have that I'm continuously adding to and seeing, you know, who I could really have on the show. So last week we did conspiracy theories. Yeah. That's like a dope yeah. one yeah. for That's me. On there. And I had Dustin on there, right? And my buddy and my buddy uh, DJ Full Effect. And I had both of them on there for specific reasons, okay? Because Dustin's anti-conspiracy? Yes. <laughs> but he's also extremely intelligent. Yep. And he's outspoken. Yep. And the same thing goes for DJ Full Effect. Um, he is extremely intelligent as well. And they both had similarities in their opinions and their, their facts. But then they also differed. And I really like to have that because... Yeah. There's always going to be someone on, on one end and there's always going to be someone on the other end. And you might even have a few in the middle, yeah. you know, but, that's but at the end of the day, real dialogue. and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm not on here to have no pussy footing around. Okay. That's not what we're here for. That's not what we do on the raw report. That's not yeah. what we do here. I, I find there has to be like a good fine line in between being real as fuck and, uh, you know, being respectful. You know, yes. that's why I had to clarify moments ago, right? Because I know how outspoken I am, but I also know <laughs> that sometimes when being outspoken, <laughs> you can like teeter totter onto the wrong side a little too much. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so I might be loud and proud, but I try to be careful sometimes, you know? Trust, but trust. Uh, <laughs> I can relate to that so much, you know? Oh. There we go. But, but here's the question, though. Would you rather be a real one and outspoken and, you know, maybe misspeak a little bit sometimes or just stay quiet? No, I'd rather be exactly who I am. You know, I've always been outspoken. Have out, I, I've learned 
as I get older. I love that I'm about very, you. Very passionate about my views and my perspectives. And as I've got older, I've realized not to have any emotional attachment to any of the way I see anything. Because a lot of times, the way I feel about that is misguided, or it's just, you know, in comparison of what you're talking about at the time, you put different value in different things. And then, like, you know, a good example of, like, because what I'm trying to say is very complicated, but it's, like, I guess the easiest example is how, like, you know, I could ask you one day who your favorite singer is. You could be, like, Aretha Franklin. The next day you might be, like, eh, you know, like, yeah, I don't know, change it up. Aguilera is my favorite. She's the best vocalist. But then the next day you might be like, nah, Aretha, his hands down. You know, but you know how our opinions kind of change day by day. For sure. It's, it's very human to be hypocritical. And I think, um, you know, so a lot of times, you know, outspoken people like us, we might look back on pieces of media we do, interviews, things that we say, and we're like, ah, shit. Like, I cringe regularly going back and watching Toronto Talks. I reached out to you after the one show the one day, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. You know, I was like, <laughs> like I was being a fucking dick. You know what I mean? I went back and watched it. I'm like, that was tasteless. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I was being funny at the time. I go back, I'm like, it was just tasteless. It made me cringe. So I, I had to reach out and apologize. But, you know, I definitely get so caught. good, man. My, you know, I, I get caught with my tongue stuck out of my mouth more times than I don't, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, it makes me me. You know what I mean? And I exactly. think it, it allows those conversations to exist. Because without me, you know, sometimes I'll stand on a ledge I don't even believe on on the show just to create the dynamic of the devil's advocate. You know what I mean? So yes. there's a dialogue yeah. to happen. And then I go yeah. back and watch it, and I'm like, damn, I look like I'm defending these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to be, but... Of course not. But, you know, be, doing the, the Raw Report and now doing Toronto... I mean, see, I almost call the Toronto Talks. Talk <laughs> about it Tuesday. I've done that a few times, by the way. Really? Um, but doing both of those shows, like, I've, I've noticed that, too. So when I was doing the show last week for uh, the, with the regarding conspiracy theories, that's what I had to do. I'm more of the commentator and the middle person to be like asking all the questions. That's what I did. And you know, if you notice, that's what journalists do, right? Yeah. They can't really show their opinion, but through finessing the way that they, they ask their questions, it's like, well, what do you think about this? You know, yeah. I've heard this, that, and the other. And you could agree with every single part of that. But then you just don't even talk about that. And you just say, well, what do you think? Or what do you think about this? So, like, when I was on the show last week, I was like, what do you think about uh, the censoring and stuff on Facebook? And IG and all that, you know? Because I was one of those people that got censored. Yeah. Oh, when I was you? sharing stuff. Yeah, when I was talking about stuff on Facebook and IG and when I shared stuff. I got censored. And I just thought it was odd because never, ever have I seen anything get censored like that on uh, social media or anything because everyone's supposed to be entitled to their own opinions and their own mindsets, right? Yeah. Now, with all the bullshit that's on the internet, like um, pedophilia, like fighting videos, animal cruelty, mm -hmm. rapes, all that shit. Just to name a few. None of that stuff's taken down. Mind you, anything that goes on the internet is on there forever. But you can take it off of that site or whatever it is. And none of it gets taken off. But this stuff got taken off. So I thought that was a valid question to ask. I got some good answers. And that's really just what it's all about. To, don't feel bad about, you know, making it like thinking that you're defending people. Because it kind of will sound like that sometimes. But it's our job in those those positions on, on these shows yeah. to spring those questions up because whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. You might yeah. ask something that somebody never even thought of. Now they're like, Oh shit. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Now they have to think about that and, 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 and answer it, you know, honestly, right on the spot. And that's tough sometimes, but it is what it is. Right. But that's why I like those shows. That's why I love doing the talk about it Tuesdays because you can still interact with people and buddy, there's a lot of interaction on there and I love it. Yeah. I love I love hearing people talk. I hate it when I when I see people putting other people down about their opinions. Just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean they're not entitled to it. The fuck facts. facts. You facts. know, just just because you have a difference of an uh, of opinion with someone is not unhealthy. In fact, it is healthy. It's, it's the healthiest thing because that's how you come right to agreement that's right. And you like you said earlier, yeah. And like you said earlier, it opens up a really good dialogue. Yeah. And that's right. The There's times. Yeah, there's times I watch shows 
and I might not agree with uh, one of the sides, but they might start saying things that, again, I didn't think of. And I'm like, oh, you know what? That actually makes a little bit of sense. I might not agree with everything that person says, but I can take what they just said and I can now apply it um, in whatever way, right? Like you said, like keeping that open mind and just, you know, going full throttle um, on whatever you believe in makes you you. You know, yeah. it always makes you you. I know I've grown up a lot of my life with people sometimes saying, you know, come on, like, tone it down. Or, tone you know, down. not everybody needs yeah. to, not everybody, you know, needs to hear about. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do. Okay. Yeah, they do. Okay. That's just me. So, like, you, you might have even seen, like, Coco and Courtney, that's my name name, Okay. I'm just, I've just always been that type of person. I don't like to see people getting bullied. I don't like to see people getting silenced, whether it's their music or whatever. If you do, I'm going to say something probably, you know, because it's not right. I love that you are very opinionated. I love that you are very open. I love that your music is slightly different. Not slightly. It is different. You do hip hop, but it's different. It's different. That's what I like about your music from Jump. It's that it's different. You're not conforming to what people say, you know, this is what hip hop is. Yeah, this is hip hop, but I have shit to say that you might not all want to see it the way it's being said or hear it the way it's being said, but you're different. You stand yeah. out. Thank you very much. You know much. what I'm saying? Thank you. It's facts. Yeah. You know, and facts. I try to, that's, that's the thing with making music too, right? And like, I'm sure you, you come across it as well, but like when you're opinionated, you know, you think your opinions are right a lot. You know what I mean? So it's, um, when you write, yeah. start writing songs, you don't even think of it. But sometimes, you know, like down the line, like I look back at some songs I made, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of preachy on uh, capitalism or that's kind of this or that's kind of that. And you're like, yeah, I can see why maybe I thought this was the greatest song ever created. And I can see why people might not really like it. <laughs> I can see why it didn't really get received that well. You know what I mean? Oops. <laughs> But you, but you know, know what? It's all a process, exactly. right? And it's what makes you you, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. And, you know, I feel like if, because uh, none of us are perfect, so I feel like even if we mess up or we make a mistake or maybe we go a little over the line, uh, trying to rectify it or acknowledging it, that's really like you already, like, won the battle and the war, you know what I mean? Like, not that there is a battle or a war, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Acknowledgement is everything. Yeah. Right. And I feel like with the society we live in, when people do acknowledge things, that's refreshing. Uh, Honestly, honestly, because everybody is trying to hide or, you know, like, let's get into something else, too. When it comes to music. And again, I just want to make it very clear. I am not judging. This is just a fact in my eyes. And you can just agree or disagree or whatever. It's cool. When it comes to being a female in this industry. Um, I don't feel like any female is a victim, so that card should just be thrown the fuck out one time. Um, but what I am going to say is that you do need to have a thick skin mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. do need to, you need to speak up for yourself, period. That's it. Because, uh, when I started doing this and I'm sure there's a lot of females that can agree with this and say, I went through it too. Um, and I do know some females who did and they just gave up unfortunately. Um, but running into situations where like, oh, you know, you don't have to pay for this beat. What do you mean I don't have to pay for that beat? I'm paying for the beat. Like, wouldn't you ask Buddy over there to pay for the beat? I'm going to pay for the beat. They want a different payment, right? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, let's do this collab, but you don't have to pay for it. Like, Buddy, my money is just as good as theirs over there. So if you don't want my money, I don't want your beat. They want you it, have yeah. to be. Huh? Say, go ahead, go ahead. They want to try to use their services in a way to basically, basically, in turn, without saying it directly, sleep with you or get some yeah. sort of... Or get something, towards, yeah. Towards doing such. Yeah, exactly. And I've actually had people tell me, I remember vividly, I had a producer actually say to me, like, well, you're not going to be shit without my beats. Thinking that because I'm at the beginning, and I'm when I say beginning, I mean... Recording on the computer with those old microphones. Okay? Because that's how I started. 
right? This is nasty out here, dude. Yeah, and so that's what he said. And I'm like, you know what? Who the fuck knows you, though? No disrespect, but people know you, but they don't know you like that either, buddy. So that's not going to work with me. So I'm like, I don't want nothing from you, not even your beat, nothing. And I mean, now he doesn't even do that stuff anymore. Yeah. And again, it's no disrespect to him. Maybe he chose for whatever reason not to do it anymore. But the fact of the matter is, females, I feel like, do at times or can at times have it a, have it a bit harder if that's the way they're going to put it. But in my eyes, I feel like I am a female, obviously. But I don't feel like that's something that should deter you. Yeah. Because it's just like you being you as Maloney. You can be stepped on, stomped on, like degraded, whatever it is. But do you love doing music? Yeah. And it's is anyone going to stop you? Exactly. Is anyone going to stop you from being music? Is anyone going to stop you from being you? Hell no. So the way that I look at it is I walk into a room, there's all men. I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. Because yeah. you make your mark, kind of. You know what I mean? You make your mark. The more people you work with, they see how you are. For instance, when I meet somebody, I look them dead in their eye and I shake their hand and they feel like it's going to break because that's just how I am. Yeah. I want you to know that when you shake my hand, there's no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And that's what females have to do. They can't cry about it. They can't. This is a man's world still, whether you like it or not. Yeah. There's a lot of women doing a lot of big things and they should be proud of themselves. There's a lot of men doing a lot of great things. They should be proud of themselves. I hate it when it's divided. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I agree with you. And you I'm tired me. of hearing about the victim card. I don't want to hear none of that. Yeah. It sucks that it happens, but it's like anything in life. You got to push through and you got to kind of like find an, an alternate, like a detour. Yeah. And you got to just make it work. And anybody that tells me they can't, no, nah, I don't want to hear none of that because well, you know, it's not is- easy for me, but I do it. Yeah, and you know, and it goes every direction too, right? Like, and that's yeah. why I kind of I really like the point you're saying right now, because um, you know, the way that a woman in the music industry might have to deal with um, harassment or making choices, um, basically, a lot of times this stuff depends on your vulnerability, right? Yeah. Like, the more vulnerable you are, the more likely you are to have people try to take advantage of you, all these things. But that doesn't stop at females. Now, yeah. you, it's a different kind of um, vulnerability and taking advantage of. But if I go into a room full of these same old men and I know nothing about business and they want to sign me a record deal, let's say my singles pop, and they're going to try to throw me a 360. Now, it might be yes. a different kind of taking advantage of someone and their vulnerability, but it's two heads of the same dragon. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Uh, this, this is going to kick us off in a minute. So here, if I punch <laughs> out, I'll go back on if you want to uh, jump back in. Okay, no problem. Like a proper ending and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no so, problem. All right, cool. So just uh, Instagram changed their thing, so it'll take a couple minutes. I'll have to turn it off, upload it, and then I can come back on. Okay, no problem. All right, and we're back. <laughs> we're back. So, um, the, you know, when you time. I could, you know, I could talk this kind of stuff with you all day. You know, I, it, we seem to be very like-minded individuals and, you know, our, our, our views of just this type of stuff. But I do want to get to the music, you know, before we do wrap it up. Because that's what we're here for at the end that's of the day. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. So um, first off, the Forever Love video I thought was super well done. Um, and I was surprised Briz did that, eh? So Briz, Briz uh, helped with the direction. Okay. Right, he did the direction, and then we had mm-hmm. also um, Carrie Ann um, helping out with that as well from Hook and Co Entertainment, um, and then we had uh, Hawkeye Films, David from Hawkeye Films, and Darcy. He's a cinematographer as well. Yeah, and then um, yeah, so it was really well uh, filmed. It was two days. It was a huge. It was a huge uh, project for sure. And then we had our stylists and everything there too, Chandra. Yeah, I really like the vibe you guys did with the video. You guys, um, the, you you really captured that like 1950s vibe, like real perfectly, like from wardrobe to the, um, you know, just like the decor in the rooms that you chose to shoot in and stuff like that. Like the, you guys did a very good job at, at bringing that 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 vision to life. I, I thought. 
Thank you very much. It's definitely a project I'm extremely proud of, and that was the first project that uh, I was able to do with this team. So, and that, that's another thing, doing, it, doing music so long, people might think, oh, why don't you just quit already? But this is why you don't quit. Because the more you push, you end up eventually getting that team little by yep. little and building relationships. And that's what you need to do, right? Building relationships. And later on, those people and you might work in whatever capacity, right? Facts. That's the whole game. And that's, you know, if yeah. I could get any advice to an up and coming artist, and which is funny because it seems like by the day this becomes less viable, but... You know, I was a shy kid growing up, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like ironic that I've come to this place where I'm just unapologetically me and do media and just... Beautiful, it's beautiful. It, you know, but um, I was a super, super shy kid, you know what I mean? I used to care what everybody thought. Like, I used to be the kid that, like, on the grade school, if I had a differing opinion of something and I shared yeah. it and people made fun of it, I would just, like, go cower and be scared, you know what I mean? Be sad about it. I wouldn't, like, defend my point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was always, always concerned what people thought about me and shit. And um, just to move forward, uh, uh, what was the point I was trying to make with it? Now, being I, you? I, yeah, so you got your brain uh, fart now. Just being I, I you. You said that you're, you, you were a shy kid, and now you're unapologetically you. Um, oh, yeah. So was, you were yeah, saying your right. advice yeah. to upcoming yeah. artists, yeah. I got it, yeah. Um, so I used to go to shows, you know, for years. Like, my first, like, five years doing music, easily, I would go do shows. And unless it was, like, in my hometown, performing for people I knew that fucked with me and supported me, like, friends and stuff like that, you know. When, when I'd go out of town and do shows, I wouldn't be out there trying to network with all the different artists I'm meeting and stuff. I was there to, for one sole mission, to put on the best performance I could and absolutely kill it and try to be better than every other rapper at that show. So I stood out. But I never played the most important part of that role which is sticking around and talking to people and getting to know right. people and building relationships because I was shy. So I would go there and just, you know, drink a bunch, kill the set, try to be the best performer of the night that I possibly could, try to blow everyone out of the water. But then there's no follow-up to that. You don't gain any fans, any supporters. You're not actually interacting with people. You're walking around like your shit don't stink. You don't fucking talk to anyone. Little do people know you're shy. They look at you like you're a dickhead. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this fucking asshole wanders in here, fucking rips the show apart, and then just fucking hovers around and doesn't say shit to everyone, gives people dirty looks. So, you know what I mean? They don't know you're shy. But, you know, and it, it took years to really realize how big of a handicap I put on myself in my early stages of my career when I could have been doing the most important networking that, that could have been the most vital networking to me at that time. I was wasting it all away just to go out there. You know what I mean? And it, that yeah. would be my biggest advice, you know, is just work on catering, building mm -hmm. relationships, because that is the most important thing. And to finally get a team, like it's a beautiful thing to see that you got your team behind you now, because you're absolutely right. That is the hardest thing to do is because anyone can build a team. We, I'm sure you had it as well. When you first got into music, I'm sure you had a team. But those people flake. They fall off. They fall apart. They're not there when you really, when, thing, when gears really start moving, you need to depend on them to do this or that. They're the ones who aren't there. It takes years to really build a like-minded team of people who have a common goal, who can all work different parts of the, the machine to make it all work in unison. And uh, no pun intended. From our yeah. Really. But, <laughs> yeah. But, but make it all move in unison and work together to achieve the goals. You know what I mean? And that takes so long. And it's like, it's just a beautiful thing to see that you finally got that thing in motion now, you know? And I feel like I'm finally starting to get to a point where I'm at now where I'm finally starting to get a team under me who is sufficient. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I did this shit years on my own back. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, it, 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 if you can do it by yourself, though, once you have a team, you're unstoppable. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a beautiful thing to see that you got that finally. And, you know, I'm looking forward to see what you guys collectively continue to keep pushing in the future with it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And that's amazing advice, I think, because um, I've been to a lot of shows and there have been plenty of shows that I've been to where artists performed. <clears throat> Not only did they leave right after they performed, they didn't guilty. really... No, I mean, it's not, again, it's not a judgment. It's just realizing these things. Sometimes, like yeah. you said, it took you, it took you a few years to really understand because maybe obviously you didn't have somebody that tell, told you that. 
Yeah, exactly. If you, just... you don't, if you don't know, <clears throat> it's not really an excuse to say, but it's it's a reason. It's understanding that dynamic, right? Yeah. If you don't know, <clears throat> how are you gonna know unless you learn the hard way? Yep. Or somebody does what you're doing right now and says, "Hey guys, this is what you should not do. This is what you should do." Right? Focus on the positive. What you should do because it really and truly like. The best way, and I had somebody ask me this, a few people actually asked me this before, what, like, how do you get the connections that you do get? And I said, I show up early, unless there's something that regards my son. Yeah. A lot of shows that I've been to, I was even there before the DJ. You know (laughs) what I mean? You get there, you know, early, like, as, you know, at least for sound check. Yeah. You know, because then when your sound messes up later on in the show, you're screwed. Like, it's too late already. So I feel like taking it seriously uh, is the first step. And just networking. Like you said, staying and networking. Because people ask me this stuff, and that is the, that's the how. That's yeah. the how. Because I, I come as early as I can. I stay to the very end unless, you know, the subway was, you know, I, I was taking the subway and I had no ride. Now I have yeah. a car. It's cool. But... <clears throat> Even then, sometimes I'd have to take the go train. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Late at night. Doesn't really matter, you know? But, yeah, that, that's, a, that's probably, like, one of the best advice, aside from if I had to give advice, it would be to just do you no matter what, unapologetically. Yeah. Obviously, make sure you're not offending people, but sometimes, even when you do things right, you still offend people. You can't make the everyone people. Nah, the people that you offend when you're doing things properly, those people are offended because they're the ones that have the problem. Facts, yep. I don't care. That's what it is, period, end of story. If you're offended at something that somebody's saying, it's probably because the shoe fit. Yeah. Right? Yep. So I, a lot of people don't like the truth. It sucks, right? Yeah. But that's really the best advice. Be you, fuck everybody else. Facts. And I don't mean fuck everybody else as in don't give a shit about them. Or no, just be you. You know how hard it is? And I know I know you know how hard it is because even though I'm an outspoken person and I always have been, I've I was also shy too. Yeah. I had stuff hap- happening when I was growing up that made me feel like I had to be silenced. That's why I do not like people silencing other people. Yeah. You know? When you're bullied enough or you're silenced enough, like you just break out one day and you're like, I'm never gonna be like that again. Right. You know? Because yeah. even though you do have your own opinions, you also care about what other think others think of you. Yeah. That's just that's just how we are as humans, right? You there is a part of you that's always gonna care to a point, but you eventually gotta form formulate that into I only care this much. And it's yeah. not that if you and you and you and you don't like me or don't like what I'm doing, I'm gonna change it. That's not what I mean. I mean I want people to see what I'm doing for the better and know that I'm doing it, you know, for the better to help people, to help myself, that kind of stuff. That's the part that I care about. Yeah. Any, any new up and coming artist, they just, you just be you remember to network because the worst thing that can happen to, and I had to learn this too, is they say no. Yeah. That's- like I've gone up to people to network. They literally yeah. turned around, saw little old me and they're like, who the fuck is this girl? But you know what? You make an awesome point with that, too, because that's another thing that took me years. Um, You know, and I I think these are like little ideologies and like, you know, like like mental um, defense mechanisms you put up, you know, through being a kid, whether it's, you know, like I was chunky when I was a little kid. So, you know, the the idea of being rejected by a girl was like the scariest shit in the world. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Like after it happens once and your friends laugh at you, you're like, oh. I, I can't do that again. You know what I mean? No. I'm a messenger was your best friend when it came up. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Not to make a joke. I remember me. those days. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. But I think it's one of those things where, you know, as you get older, you got these, like, defense mechanisms you put in place over such trivial little things in your past that you don't actually realize why you have them. You know what I mean? You just continue living with them. And it's not until you really look back subjectively that you're like, damn, like, What's the worst thing that happens? Somebody says no? You know what I mean? Like, do you know how many years I was doing this radio show? And I'm like, oh, I'd love to interview. Like, even, like, Necro. You know what I mean? Who I just yeah. interviewed before you were. Dope like, interview, by the way. Yep, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It, he's He likes to talk. You know, he he made it interesting. I didn't even... I If I...
showed up my papers, I didn't even ask like three things off it. It was just like free flow combo, which is great. That's the best. Those That's are the best. The best. But it's yeah. like, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy how you, you almost, you're your own worst enemy sometimes. You set up these mental blocks and things. And, you know, when you look back in hindsight, you're like, what was I scared of? A no? Yeah, what's the, you know, it's like Jordan, you miss every hundred shots you don't take, right? You just got to shoot for the fucking line. And if you don't get a response, you don't get a response. But you know what? Out of those 10 people you messaged that day, one of them's going to respond. to you. you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, aside from that, you might uh, try to connect with 10 people and yeah. only one of them, like you said, reaches back out, right? Yep. However, now that you've made that little stamp to them, whether they ignored you this time or not, the other nine, yep. down the line, you might work with them. Yeah, because they'll remember. Or they might, they might be watching you the whole time and you didn't even know. And then yep. all of a sudden, sudden they hit you up and they're like, Hey, Coco, you know, I see you're doing this talk about it Tuesdays. Like, I really like what it's about. Like, do you mind if I jump on? Or do you mind if I get an interview? Or yeah. whatever the case is. I've, the, the, that's why I say build relationships. Because, honestly, people sometimes, they just don't understand that you, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, I want to work. Yeah. Okay, let's just do that. You have to build relationships. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just have to. Network, build relationships. And I feel like as humans, not just artists, but as humans, we tend to focus on the negative right away Yeah. yeah rather right. than looking, like you said, glass half full, right? It's yeah. all, it's, it's easier said than done. I will say that, it is, but, it is, but you do, unfortunately in life, you do need negative. You do need pain. You need all of that stuff to kind of keep you grounded and make you appreciate wow. things, make you love yourself more. Yeah. Um, sometimes we don't realize what struggles we have until some stuff happens yeah and it knows. might be the worst thing in your life but if it doesn't kill you it makes you stronger Fact. and sometimes just having those few people around you to help you get through that is key but another thing i'm going to say advice wise just uh for artists djs people in general um you got to kind of just push through that negative and you got to be able to see the other side yeah, you have to be able to see the other side, even if it seems like so minuscule that that mm -hmm. tunnel is so narrow that you can barely see that light. Who cares, bro? Just go for it. And you have to be able to also know how to get through it on your own, because not yep. everybody has a huge support system. A lot of people have a lot of family. Um, and a lot of friends. But even with all those people, very little support, no support, yeah, maybe yeah. even none. You know what I mean? And that's really shitty. It's yeah. sad. But I mean, it's not the end either. You know, so as a as an from one artist to other artists, uh, yeah, network, focus on the positive and keep going, because who the hell is that person over there that's going to tell you you can't says who? <laughs> that's the funny thing. It's always people who have less like. A great thing, like I, I'm a religious fan of Joe Budden's podcast, but like the other week. Oh my god, uh, I love that um, guy. Do you? Yeah. So they're his they're podcast. Always, it's amazing, but they're always ripping on him for pumping up, right? And so yeah, of uh, course. You know, they're giving him the pump it up joke last week. He's like, "Oh, hold on." He's like, "We're gonna have a conversation that we've been me we've been needing to have for a while." He's like, "For all you motherfuckers out there with your pump it up jokes," he's like, "It's a lot of you motherfuckers without a pump it up." <laughs> True. It's true. A lot of times the people talking the most true. The most unqualified people to talk to. That's, that's how it always is. There's yeah. always somebody talking and it's always the people that know this much that talk yeah. this much. Yeah. And when those things happen, it's just like, all right, cool. You have a good day. Yeah. You stay yeah. over there. You have no business being around me okay? and that's really just what it is i feel uh since 2018 um as well there's been a few cuts in life yep. because as we grow as individuals um unfortunately we need to cut whether that be in the music world in your personal world whatever but i feel like in the music business too and you i know you'll know this <clears throat> 
There's so much drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yep. I'm going to just leave it at that. But uh, because of that, just like, no, I don't have time for that. Last yeah. time I checked, I got on this to just do me, uplift people and myself, you know, make a change, make a difference, and just love what I do. Like, we don't have time for none of that at all. No. At all. That's because no. all I see is people bringing people down. We need to bring each other up, man. That's the thing. That's that's the biggest thing is positivity will get you through a lot of shit. And it's like, you know, one thing you're saying about, like, you know, it's not easy to look at the glass half full. And you're completely right. And, you know, that's why I try to be weary when talking about mind state and perspective because perspe realizing a grasp on your perspective early in life, like at, like, 16, 17 years old, widen my eyes and change my yeah. life completely like i'd probably be in jail or somewhere really dumb doing something fucking stupid if i didn't come to this realization a lot earlier than a lot of people i knew yeah you know I mean? yeah because i realized yep. everything is cause and effect and everything is perspective like because this dude calls me a douchebag in front of my girlfriend i don't have to punch him in the face right you know you feel like you have to punch him in the face but yeah. after you don't a couple times you don't start a beef and then two days later, you forget it happened. You're like, oh, damn, that would have been shitty if I punched that guy in the face the other yeah. day. And I was in yeah. jail now. Like, that'd be kind of whack. You know, and yeah. it's, it's all a perspective thing. And, like, I got friends still yeah. at 30 years old who can't separate themselves from that perspective. Like, they can't they, – they'll fly off the handle if someone disrespects them in a certain way or whatever. And it, and it goes back to what we were saying before. It's like a lot of times the dude calling you douchebag is the least qualified dude at, at, the, at the club to call you a douchebag. He's the biggest right? douche here. You know what I mean? Right? Like, ah, like, uh, yeah. No. But, you know, it's just, it's one of those perspective things. And if I had to give anyone even advice on just trying to change their perspective, like, you know, especially to like what you're saying, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. The biggest thing I would say is, you know, to keep pushing for that light is that you just never, you know, don't get caught up in the hype and the numbers because you have to be happy as long as you can continuously do things that 16 year old you would be proud of or be bugging yeah. about and you can keep that mind state like damn me I, you know 10 years ago i'd be wilding knowing that i'd be doing this in the future and if you can keep having those little moments even if they're just little small things like a like from somebody you are a fan of or a whatever you know what i mean a message from a fan or or or, or um you know getting on a publication you had never been on before or you know, getting a certain view count on a certain video or something. Right. But as long as you allow these little, these little stepping stones and landmarks to be achievements you're proud of, and you don't look at them like it's not enough yet, then it's very easy to m slowly get to that light at the end of the tunnel. But it's the people okay. with the cynical mind who are going to fall long before they get to that light because they just, they're not mentally built and prepared to yeah. take that long ride to get there, you know, and recognize... Mm -hmm each step along the way as being something to be proud of. Yep. I think, yeah. I think part of that problem too is, is like we were saying before, people are like, people are so hard on themselves too. We're yeah. all, all always our, our biggest critics. Right. Yeah. But me, for example, like I'll have certain triggers and back in the day, 10, 15 years ago, I would never have had the control that I have now. Yeah. And part of it is because of my son. Part of it is because it's because of the growth, right? Yeah. A lot of uh, negativity, if you look at it the right way and you try to find some positive out of it, whether that be, like, whatever it is, it could just be uh, uh, you learning, okay, even though I do this to me, what can I do next time to fix that? Me growing up, me, me growing up was me realizing that <clears throat> just, just because they did that to me does not mean it's my fault. Yeah. Right? It means that they got to they gotta deal with themselves. Yeah. They're not, not right. Yeah. And I think that's really the psychology of it. People need to understand that just because someone did something to you does not, not mean that you deserve it doesn't mean yeah. it's your fault um i'm a strong believer of we teach people how to treat us yeah and 
again, not that it was my fault. It's just growing up. There's certain beliefs that were pushed on me or um, certain things I had no control over because I was younger. And it's just the way that it was ingrained in my mind. Right. Right? So growing up, getting out of that mindset was was extremely hard. Well, it's kind of how you deal with trauma, right? At a young age. Yeah. Yes. You look yourself like you're the problem. You can't happen. That's almost like body is designed Sight. to deal with, you know, um, yeah. traumatic things like that. And you, you it's have like, it's so to come that to really realize, like, no, it's, it's them that has a problem. Um, I, no. I this. They, they need to fix themselves. Exactly. And it's hard to see that, but once you see it, you're so much stronger for that because then the next person's going to come along and you're going to be like, yeah, you thought so, didn't you? Yeah, no. And then you're the bad guy. But you know what? I'm totally fine with that because those people are always going to see the the negative because that's what they want for you. Yeah. So as a person, as an artist, you have to just be as true to yourself as you possibly can be because there's always going to be somebody talking shit there's always going to be somebody trying to drag you down there there's always going to be somebody trying to embarrass you so case in point um very short uh, uh keep it in a nutshell but i was doing an interview <clears throat> and i had my live because i usually try to have even like before covid19 happened it was an in-person interview but i usually put my live on right yeah so i had my live on and everything was off awesome. Awesome. Then all of a sudden, I just happen to look, look down and I see somebody on there talking mad shit. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, a lot. None of it was true. And I ended up finding out who it is, who it was. You know, they made a dummy account, all this nonsense, just so they could slander me as much as they could. And I could have, and I almost did interrupt that interview called La Pernell. Yeah. But I said, you know what? No, nah, I'm not going to even do that because now I'm giving that attention. There's no way in hell anyone's interrupting my moment. That yeah. I work hard to get because they have a problem and they want to be stupid. And Facts. fun fact is the only reason that person did that was because they got put in their place when they were disrespectful on one of my posts and they thought that I was going to take their shit. And I wasn't even, it, it wasn't even like overboard with how I dealt with it. It was just like, I'm not dealing with it. I don't do drama. Yeah. You don't come on my page and be disrespectful. It doesn't work like that. So they were blocked from everything and thought, yeah, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to try to embarrass her. It didn't work. But if that was 10 years ago, I might have acted differently. Yeah. But I'm glad that I didn't and I'm glad that I let it go because that just... <laughs> Speaks volumes on that person. You know, it it just shows on your character as well, too, to let it go. You know what I mean? And that's the other thing I think people don't credit themselves enough when they learn to not involve themselves in drama bullshit. Like, it takes a lot for you to leave that there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, getting slapped in the face and turning the other chip is the easiest thing to do. You know, like, so. Some friends might want to call you a pussy or something for it, but it takes a little more strength actually than to just wow, like, act out of control and start the fist. And whether you beat up or you beat them up, causing some sort of fight. Like to be able to actually turn the other cheek, you know what I mean? It, it, it takes mm-hmm. a lot of mental training to, you know, because sometimes, you know, someone might take a punch or something, right? Like, as an example. And walk away from it because they're scared, but not because they wanted to. It's a lot different to be scared and to walk away from a situation because you're all right with yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's a lot of strength to be able to do that, you know, in those types of situations, to be able to just leave it and just, no, not worth my energy. Yeah, because it's going to really, it's not going to really do anything to better yourself you nope. know what i'm saying 
Now I need to go deep down inside that person going through their own shit. So you take that, you take it all the way over there. Because yeah. and that again is a matter of showing people how to be you. I showed that person it's not gonna go down like that. Long from life. And they thought, I'm going to try to do this. But it, like you said, it's not, it's not worth your energy uh, um, because that's not what I was there to do. I was there to talk about my stuff. I was there to deal with that. And even when that happened, I noticed after that no one was really entertaining that on yeah. live except for one person. And I'm not going to name that person again, but what I will say is they are like gone off on my social media. Yeah. My thing is if you're going to entertain that shit, you don't respect me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You either put foot in there and say, no, shut up. Or you can stay silent, but you don't entertain it because once I start entertaining it you're done too and I haven't seen that person in public if I ever do they're going to be ignored I don't even go up to them and be like oh, what the hell is it? no but it, yeah. let me say this though if you come to me now and you act like friends you're going to hear something and well, I'm going to yell like you I'm not going to do nothing None of that. I'm just gonna be like, you know what you did. The fact that you can come to me right now to say anything nice, you're fine. Exactly. I don't deal with that. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be real, you're just real. You know, you're gonna be an ass, be an ass. Yeah. One hundred. If you're gonna be supportive and respectful, one hundred. Yeah. I don't have any time for that. You know what I'm saying? There's so much negativity in the world. So that's an Another, that's another thing. Like that goes along again with, 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 with letting letting people get you out of your skin, letting them get you out of pocket where you're 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 not even displaying the character that you really are. You know what I mean? You gotta really. This industry is so saturated with so much drama and so much garbage. Where where did where did it go? Where did all just like the music go? This is about music this is about creativity this is about expressing ourselves so that's why like even some songs i've done that i've never released because it's so uh detailed yeah 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 you know what i'm saying and it's a it's a they're very sensitive issues um but they're issues nonetheless that need to be discussed and i feel like when i talk about stuff that's really difficult i therapy for me not just for other people yeah Right, so um, yeah. All in all, in a nutshell, just be you, man. You're never gonna be able to please the world. Um, so just stop trying. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just, you just gotta be you. Love yourself for you, and that that that's it. I I remember too, like growing up in uh, elementary school, in high school, having people try to say shit to me because I liked that person over there, and none of them over there liked that person. Well, I guess. You're not gonna like me either then yeah because nobody is gonna tell me who to like who to like who to chill with none of that unless you really care about me and maybe you see that you know that's a dangerous person to be chilling yeah. with yeah. give me real give me real reasons yeah that's different because you're being a real friend you know other than that I don't mess with none of that stuff. Like, we all gotta come together. We gotta unite. We gotta help each other. We gotta. We just gotta get as much positivity as we can. And I had somebody tell me recently too. You can't be positive all the time. You know, <laughs> you can't take positivity out of everything. You can't be positive. You think I'm happy all the time? No. There's times I'm pissed off. There's times I'm sad. There's times I'm annoyed. There's times I'm so. I'm human yep. like every 
every single one of you out there. However, however, you can take a negative and it can be the most negative thing in the world, but you can find at least one positive thing. And if that positive thing, like I said earlier, is the fact that you found yourself, you're winning. Yeah. And do you, don't you know, hate yourself. We all fall, but you're going to, you're going to be with just for that, that simple little fact. Yeah. You know? and, you, and you're right too. Cause one thing I always say is, um, you know, with, with, with the situation of like looking at the glass half full, I always say like, you know, what are the greatest blessings you can receive which is one of the things that most people like to <clears throat> sit in self-pity over long periods of time and use it as an excuse to do some shit, whether it be going to a vendor's party, uh, sleep with multiple people, whatever, just have their life in channels forever. But one of the greatest blessings you can ever see is to be cheated on because it puts you in a position where you now see a person's true motives and you are in a position to act on it according to how you want to and yeah. how you believe these people's intentions are or, or whatever, you know what I mean? But what it does yep. is, is it puts you in a position to really learn for self. That's what it always does. And, 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 yep. and it really is presenting you right in your face and uh, the, the opposition that this is toxic is it worth push forward or not a lot of people instead of learning the things you can learn of a breakup or you know something like that like oh you know i to the partner who's on law or this and that you know there's a lot of positives to take out of that scenario and you can use those positives to rebuild the relationship to keep it moving you know as long as both people learn from it or you could use it as a thing to be like, you know, I, I can't trust you. Get the fuck out of my life, whatever. Or you could sit there and just let it fucking ruin you and become a little crumbly bitch and be like, oh, my life sucks. I get cheated on. No one likes me. But it's like, really, that's on you to decide how you take that situation and deal with it. And that's one of the worst things that can happen to somebody is being cheated on, being betrayed. And that's why I use it as an example, because really, it's one of the greatest learning things that can happen in life. But you have to choose to see it that way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you don't, then you never will. And you'll just think it's horrible. But that's the thing. It's yeah. like, with a lot of negatives, there's always a positive to it. And a lot of times, it's hard to see at that time when it's happening. Yeah. But yeah. in hindsight, you know, there's always a positive out of every negative. Yep. 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 And uh, especially, <clears throat> it's especially hard to recognize that when, you know that saying, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. You could have one thing happen and then yeah. another thing right after. And then it's just like freaking domino effect. And you yeah. don't know how to stop the dominoes. And then before you realize it, you're like deeper than rock bottom. Yeah. But I mean, that is life. And yeah. we all go through it in some way, shape or form. And at the end of the day, like we just have to go through it and we have to push through it and find a way. And um, right. sometimes, like I said earlier, we can't do it on our own. Sometimes we need help. Right. And there's no yeah. shame in that at all. You know what I'm saying? There's no shame in that. There's there's nothing to, to feel any ways about as long, like you said, as you as long as you are able to see that. Yeah. Right. So like you said, if someone cheats on you, whether whether you feel whether you're cheated on in a relationship, like a romantic relationship, whether you were cheated somehow in the bit music business or whatever, you do. You do need that because <clears throat> I was saying this just earlier today. Some people are in your lives to show you love. Some people are in your life to show you true fucking pain. Mm -hmm, Some people mm -hmm. are in your life to show you how to trust again, how to mm -hmm. open up again, you know? And yeah. unfortunately, um, with the opening up, sometimes people will, you know, be in a relationship or find a friend or whatever the case is and say, shit, like, you really showed me how to open up again. And then they're the ones that screws you over. Yeah. That will hurt. That will hurt more than someone else doing it to you, right? Because they're the person that had you open yourself up. Yeah. But they did their job, so to speak. They helped you get to a point where you can open up. They destroyed exactly. you for a hot minute. Yeah, they did. But, but they now it's... <clears throat> exactly. They did, 
they did you they did you a favor in hindsight mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they made you realize different things about yourself even like i've been in certain situations where if it never happened i wouldn't have appreciated certain things exactly exactly there's certain things there's certain things in my life i kind of wish in a way didn't happen but yep. I like to not live with regrets. I like to live more looking forward. And the only mm -hmm. reason I look back is to reminisce or learn. So yeah. I like, I like I to look, I like yeah, I like to look forward to kind of see like, okay, you know, this and this happened, but how can I make that never happen again? When you, yeah. when you, when you experience true pain, you never want to feel that again. Yeah. So you'll do whatever in your power to make sure it never happens again. Yeah. You know, if you got, if, if you're, if you're within the music aspect now, if you are, let's say, um, you know, working really hard toward getting a song on the radio or getting a certain, um, video out on a certain platform and you thought you did everything in your power, put money in the right places to invest in your craft, in the marketing and the promotion, whatever. And it still flops. Some people, and I've seen some people I know, artist-wise, who have been on uh, social media lately saying, like, I'm just going to give up yeah, on yeah. music. And the thing is, now what you can do is you can look at that and say, okay, like, what the hell's going on? I put all this money into X, Y, Z, and still nothing happened. But now you have more to work with because now you know that you put money into all of those things. And you reached out to all of those people. Maybe you weren't reaching out to the correct people. Or maybe the people you were reaching out to didn't give two shits because they don't see your potential. Maybe you put money into the wrong promotional companies wrong or the thing. wrong marketing companies. Yeah. Maybe you put too much money because now, like Instagram, for instance, Facebook ads, all those. You can literally decide how much money you want to put. Yeah, yeah. And it shows you on a daily rate what that dollar amount is. And what that figure looks like on a week, a month, how many people you're going to range in, in reaching. So it, you could look at it and in the midst, in, in, the, in that very moment, you're going to be like, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. Moments later, you got to be able to look at it and say, okay, I actually do have a lot to work with here. I know what not to do now. Yeah. You know? So it's really what it is. So for people who ask why I still do it, I do it because it matters and I do it because every single year, and this is the best way to look at it, I think in my head, um, every single year has been better than the one previous. There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Even if it's this much, as it's still as better you than you were last year. If there's improvement, then you're doing something. Yeah. Right, what I mean? Yeah. Don't be too hard on, on yourselves. We're always so hard on ourselves, like I said. You need to be able to acknowledge, remember, acknowledgement is everything. You need to be able to acknowledge what you have done and say, okay, it might not have gone this way, but at least I did it. Yeah, you Another might not be thing, where you want to be, but you're, 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 you're closer than you were. Yeah, and the thing is, too, in the pantry, the thing is, too, um, it might be, like, just a little bit of work, you might think, but just, like, really strategically looking and planning where you need to reach out to is so key. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes we don't think about the planning, but that's really, it's just like cooking all the prep. Oh, all of the planning. If you do all the prep in the cooler on the bottom, if you do all the prep first, like chopping up everything or whatever, when you, when you're cooking, bro, it's like, put this in there, put that in there. Da, 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 and you're good to go. Yeah. So same thing with my, with my music. So, uh, when was it? I don't remember, like years ago. So just after my son was born, so just about 10 years ago or so, I started, um, no, it was, it was less than that. Who cares? But <laughs> what I did was I used to have this cleaning job at night. And when I, I had somebody else that, that worked there as well, and they were my ride home. So after I was done work, there was still about two or three hours that they had to still work. So I had to wait for them. So a friend of mine from back in the day went to George Brown to take the music uh, business and management program. Mm -hmm. And they still had the books. Oh. They didn't want them anymore. They didn't need them anymore. And they asked me, like, do you want it? Hell yeah, I want that. So that's why I know certain things to this day, because what I did for two, three hours every single day while I waited for my friend to be done their shift that's what I was doing. I was reading that, those books. I was highlighting 
the, the pertinent parts and I was making notes and studying just like as if I was in the program. You yeah. know, I'd section off my chapters and I'd learn that way because, and I'd go to conferences, I'd go to seminars and even now like webinars, you know, stuff that's free that you don't even think about, but yeah. they're right there. It's just, you have to look for it. You have yeah. to, okay, what do I want? You know, and I'm going to, I'm not even going to lie. Like a lot of things that I've learned in the last almost three years now is uh, because of Hook & Co. So I don't know if you've heard of Hook & Company. I've heard of them, or yeah. Pro Company. Yeah. So I've learned a lot from them too about balancing your business, making more of a plan too. So it's really about just taking parts of everybody, you know, mm -hmm. to learn, to, to, to be the best artist or DJ or whomever you can be in the business, right? Yeah. 100%. And, you know, like, with everything we've been saying, you know, um, I think it's really refreshing dialogue, really refreshing conversation, you know, and it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's the type of things that need to be talked about and, you know, the, the type of ways for people to view things and stay inspired and not lose faith. And uh, it actually kind of coincides um, with one of your more recent songs, but you had uh, What Dreams Are Made Of. And the whole vibe of that song is very uplifting and very kind of inspirational as well, too. So I'm kind of curious, like, before making that record, was that something you consciously went in with? Like, with these kind of thoughts in your head? Or were you having, like, a conversation with someone that was kind of along these lines that inspired it? Or, like, what? Because, you know, a lot of times, it, people, I find inspirational music is very far and few between. So I, I, like, I, I get curious sometimes when, you know, I see people do it and they do it well. I like to know kind of what was their inspiration to go in there and do that. You know what I mean? Like, but I was just kind of curious if there was like, you know, a conversation before you, you went and made that record or if it was just the vibe you're feeling that day or if it was something you had on your mind you, you'd been meaning to put into a song or if it just kind of, you know, one of those songs that wrote themselves. Like what was kind of the process into making that record? Well, um, first and foremost, shout out to DJ Full Effect because he's the one that made that. He's out okay. in Tallahassee, Florida. So him and I had already been talking for a long time about collab collaborating in that way. And he, I asked him, what was the story behind you making the beat? Mm. Because even for producers, I mean, they feel just like artists do when they're writing their songs, right? I like so, that. I like that. I like that. No, artists rarely ask a producer that perspective. I really like that. I love to know, because I'm like you, I like to know the story behind it, because I'm a lyrical person, too, so I really listen to the lyrics, you yeah. know? And so I asked him, and it's really important for me to capture exactly what I wanted to say or whatever I was thinking, or if it's somebody else's story, I really want to make sure I capture exactly what they want to be captured. So mm -hmm. I asked him what he was thinking of, and it was, ugh, the story behind it is huge. So when I hear that song, I still get goosebumps. So I asked him about the story first, about what he felt, what, what he made it, like what he was thinking of when he made it. He told me his story. And from that, I actually listened to the beat for a while before I even wrote anything. And then, and that's usually what I do. Sometimes I'll be able to start writing right away. Mm -hmm. And then other times I like to just take in the beat for a while. And then I started writing. And as soon as I started, I actually started freestyling on it. And then once I started, like it just flowed. Just wrote itself. It, yeah, it flowed. It flowed so incredibly and like when he heard it he was just like wow like thank you so much because you really captured exactly what I wanted and the song really also depicts like who I am as a person so there's a line in there and it's actually the motto that I live by it's on all my stuff you get what you put in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's a big line in that song because that song is geared to reach out to people in music and reach out to people in life. So whatever you put in is what you're going to get back, if not more, right? Yeah. So if you're, if you're only going to put in 1%, like how you expect to get 90 or 100%. So that song is really to uplift people and, and make them remember, if you want this, then you got to put in this. Yeah. You can't want this and you're putting in this. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So it was really just to remind people to wake up and just put in the work, not it goes back to the whole like buying likes instead of putting in the hard work to make sure you get those likes. Yeah. You know, so that's really what it was just like in life. If you want to be healthy or you want something to go your way, you got to make it go your way. So 
that's how uh that's how that song came to be okay yeah. cool i really like uh the video as well too because um for a couple different reasons, but for one, I'm always a sucker for that scenery. Anytime a music video is shot under the bridge where you got the skate park and the back, yeah. that's just one of my favorite pockets of Toronto, like visually, is mm -hmm. under the gardener where they have that. Like, I just think it really represents the vibrance, the vibrant, you know, youth vibe. Oh, yeah. The you know colors that pop. Yeah, I love and, it. You're, and you're under the bridge, so it still has that really, like, urban, you know, urban. punk jungle vibe to it but it should like you know what i mean it's like it's like the rose that grew from concrete kind of symbolically is kind of what like that area is to me so I, I i'm always a sucker for that visually but um i like the way that you guys did it as well too like you you, you sing it in front of the pillar and behind you you see the kids on you know on yeah. the and stuff like that or uh do dance and it just it, it's very much about like i don't know it just shows like it's like it's a scenery shot, but at the same time, it's also showing kind of like the inspiration, like putting in the work to do what you want to do almost subconsciously yeah. while you're watching you sing. You know what I mean? I just, I like the way like, you know, metaphorically it works, like visually off yes. the jump. I love that scenery, <laughs> but then I just like the way it metaphorically worked with the song and the message as well too. So I want to make sure to kind of just bring that up as well too, when we were talking about the record. Yeah, I appreciate that. Shout out to Xerox who shot that. He's uh, in Cleveland and Detroit. He came down here to shoot that. And what I oh, like about how he... Sh Pardon? Oh, I just said, oh, really? That's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's he's dope. And if anybody ever needs, like, that's your guy. Because he even, like, uh, he's very affordable as well. Um, but what I like about how he shot that video is there's actually a good number of people who have shot videos in that area, under yeah. that bridge. But yeah. What I liked, because I've watched... A bunch of those videos and what i liked about my video is it still looks different yeah yeah exactly he literally he literally utilized the entire thing yeah entire on both sides because then you have that side where you have the mirrors on the the ceiling yeah whatever under the bridge so we use literally both sides the entire thing and that's what i love i love it when you're filming a video and the person's like yeah we're using all of this yeah and they have the vision for it and they know how to yes. build it yeah. Yeah. It was it was an amazing collaboration. So yeah, I definitely thank you very much. Like I really appreciate that, and that's a huge song. I feel like it's it's always going to be a huge uh, a huge song. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really well done. Um, but you know, honestly, I could I could sit and uh, oh no, you're freezing again. Uh oh. I'll send my waves out. happened yet in this last oh she's gone all right well i was just gonna pretty well get to wrap it up but hold on let's see if she jumps back in here for uh before we do that give it a proper um proper outro you know i know this thing's gonna boot us off pretty soon too we're getting near that time but you know we'll just give it another give her a few minutes see if she she's able to hop back in here Oh, here she, yeah, she's right here. All right, perfect. Yeah, this is the last straw. <laughs> well, you know what? This, this, is the last, this is the last straw, guys. This is the last <laughs> straw. You know what, though? At least we, we got through that last... Uh, Fuck, that man. Almost a whole hour without one. So that, Excuse uh, my language. Um, Yeah, we're going to get booted out soon anyways, whatever. Yeah. Oh, no, not again, not again. Come on, get us through this last bit. Get us through this last bit. Come on, Instagram. Send the waves out again. IG's just like, yo, you guys are using too much IG today. We're going to kick you guys off. We're going to fuck y'all shit up. Oh, man, IG, you doing it. Damn. All right. Well, I know it's gonna boot us off in a minute. Let's let's uh give her another sec. See if we can get it get it popping one more time before um it does boot us off. So we can just do a proper outro. You know, no one likes anything cut off, right? Unless it's a shitty movie. But this ain't a shitty movie. So <laughs> let's just see. Give it another minute or so. We're not booted off quite yet. Oh, 
Let's see. Oh man, cut off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there she is. All right, all right. It's going to work out like perfect timing. I bet we'll get... Yo, yo. <laughs> all right, so, yo, what we will do, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get it wrapped up now before, before it cuts us off again. But, um, you know, just let the people know um, one more time when the... <laughs> when the new book okay. is coming out and uh, just fun the, um, the Tuesday talk. <laughs> okay. All right, first of all, thank you uh, to everybody who's tuned in and is being patient with this freaking data problem. Um, and thank you to you too, uh, Maloney. So my the best place to find all of my stuff is my website, cocolea.ca. So that's C-O-C-O-L-E-A-H.ca. You can find me on all social media, Instagram, coco.lea, as you guys see. Coco Lea on uh, both my Facebook pages, we're on YouTube, SoundCloud. Just Google and you'll find Coco Lea. So Melody, the video for Melody is going to release Monday, the 25th. You can, uh, yeah, bam, baby. That's going to be huge. That's going to be huge featuring Briz. And we're going to have the campaign start that week to sell Melody t-shirts so we can support artists. So please, please, please tune in also next Tuesday to my Talk About It Tuesdays with Coco, 9 p.m. to hear more about that. And every Tuesday, we're going to be talking about different things surrounding COVID-19. Yeah. Um, the next video that we're going to do is uh, for Real Love Test. So if you haven't heard that single, check it out on all digital platforms. In the meantime, enjoy the videos and songs and interviews and everything on my website. Awesome. Awesome. And everybody tune into this guy's show and Toronto Talks because you're a real one. I really appreciate you. Salute. I appreciate your music. I appreciate your outspoken personality. <clears throat> I just appreciate you, period. How about that? Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. Hey, thank to you. you and your girl because that's a blessing. How far along are you guys? It should be here in a couple weeks. It should be here. Right. You said that. You and Dustin are expecting. Yep, yep. So that's, yeah, I, I, a lot of people actually, it's crazy. Yeah. So, so I'm really happy for you. Thank it's you. the best job you're ever going to have in your life. That's what that's what everybody says. I, I think I'm yeah. all right at it. I know. I, I think you're gonna be a great. <clears throat> I think you're gonna be a great dad because Thank the personality you. you have and the mindset that you have, your kids blessed. So Thank you very much. I know. I know. Um, Lindsay will be a great mom. So I mean, if I'm not the best dad, at least she, at least she, she, she can overcompensate on that. Yeah. Oh, she'll be amazing. <laughs> she's amazing too. I've met her once or twice, and she's dope as well. Yeah. So I think, I think you guys are gonna do great. Thank you very much. Thank you very You're much. You're so welcome. It. Thank you. Yeah, and you so know, we'll keep... I'm glad we finally got it to happen. You know, I know. <laughs> it's been years in the making. I swear. It's been I appreciate you sticking with it. I really do. I really, really do. I really we do. Finally got Thank it. you. We finally got it. So, um, but you know, doors always open. You're always welcome on any of our platforms, as you already know. Glad to have yeah, you up anytime. You. And, um, you know, look forward to continuing the dialogue and the conversation next time we chop it up on what, what, yeah, what platform, one of mine, whatever it be. Definitely. I will take you up on that for sure. So we'll keep in touch. Thank you again. Blessings to you and everybody on this live. And blessings to you, everybody on the live. Stay safe. And thank you for your time, Coco. I appreciate you.